just uh, uh, briefly explain um, the, the structure behind the IQ technique for the very simple. And uh, what is uh, unique or what we are trying to understand in IQ is uh, ultimately how not to fight with the other person. Um, recently, for Nisei Week in Little Tokyo, we gave a demonstration of uh, swordmanship and IQ. And uh, we had uh, many experts from Japan come to demonstrate the cunning ability of the sword. And uh, of course, uh, everyone enjoyed it. But uh, uh, in Japan, they can't shoot the gun, so they wanted to go to the shooting range. So the next day, we took them to the shooting range. And uh, it just so happened that the LA SWAT team was there practicing. So, because we had uh, such important teachers from Japan, they gave us a uh, demonstration. Then, from 100 or 150 yards, they put the four bullets within a half inch radius. And uh, within 50 yards, they can put the five or six bullets within a three inch radius in your chest. Then, uh, you know, it's a silly to try to bend someone's wrist when somebody can stand <laughs> away <laughs> And uh, now every day when, uh, when I wake up, I can't eat my breakfast because I hear about all the troops going into Saudi Arabia, Arabia. Then I try to eat my dinner, but how can I eat my dinner when I hear about all the hostage and all the troops and all the guns and all the ships and the planes and everything. So what we understand you know, is that uh, actually to take a life and then to take it on a grand scale like war you know, is actually kind of a terrible thing. And uh, especially in the society that we live in today, anything I do to encourage some kind of violence or injury to another person. So, what we understand as Aikido is not so much a way to injure the other person, even though it's to protect my own rights or my own self, but to find some peaceful, some appropriate reconciliation without fighting or without war. So, whether we understand this or whether I understand this in my lifetime, I don't know. But each person, I believe, has to work towards this. Otherwise, we continually fight, we continually have war, uh, and it never ends. And eventually, we won't be here anymore. So, uh, in, in uh, Japanese uh, philosophy, they have an old saying. They say, the warrior indeed is a very pathetic person. And it, it doesn't mean to be cynical. It means that uh, someone who trains and then goes out and tries to take another life or has his own life taken is kind of pathetic. And so in our society where we do have so much uncontrolled violence, our job, I suppose, or our social duty is to find some way to see that violence. And I think this was the rationale, or this was the goal behind the, the founder in his uh, development of the Aikido technique. So, you know, very simply, when he's grabbing me, then obviously just pull away. But if it, if he's too strong, or somehow resisting too strong, maybe it's difficult to pull away. That's why I'm struggling. He's grabbing me so tight. He's grabbing me tight, and I am trying to release it. So now we have conflict or we have battle. Okay. Of course, I can use my other hand to strike it, but at the same time, he can use his other hand to strike me. So the idea is when he's grabbing, even though he's grabbing, and why I'm trying to fight to get away, yeah. now we have the basis of our fight. So I can also just don't fight. So he's grabbing tight, grabbing tight, so tight. So as long as I struggle with fighting, actually you don't need to struggle because my hand actually goes freely. Stretch my face. 
Yeah, we think that uh, if you're stronger and faster and if you're bigger and more aggressive, then you have the advantage. That's uh, right. But in, in the way we think, in Eastern thinking, we say a half an inch worm has a half an inch spirit. So in the martial arts, we judge people by their spirit, by their heart, not by uh, how closely they resemble Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> yes, sir. Do you get an idea of how long some of your people have been training, what rank they are? Um, Douglas uh, Firestone is a uh, third degree black belt, and he is uh, training uh, eight years. And because uh, Nishida is uh, training 13 or 15 years, he's second degree. And the youngest one, Ken Watayaba, Watanabe is a uh, first degree black belt training two years, about two and a half years. I think you can reach a black belt level in about two and a half to three years of regular training. Nothing special, just regular training. Yes, sir. Yeah, that, yeah, you have to remember, you know, that Moby is uh, different from the, uh, you know, real life, you know. In a movie, you know, you can wake up in the morning with a beautiful woman <laughs> sleeping next to you. But in real life, it never works quite that smoothly. <laughs> and if you go over budget, you have a director and producer to get who can uh, wiggle things around for you. But uh, if I go over budget in my real life, nobody comes and uh, give, gives me a raise or anything. So you have to remember that what you see in the movie and what actually happens in real life is different. Because in the movie, you still have to brush your teeth and go to the bathroom. But I, I never see Clint Eastwood go to the bathroom or brush his teeth in the movie. Yes, sir. Uh, on the back of their uniforms, there's like a half moon with a little dot. One of the gentlemen had, the other ones have writing on their back, on their hips, and some of them have writings on their shoulders. Others don't. Can you explain that on their? Yeah, that's their name in case they get lost. <laughs> you read it and return to me. <laughs> and uh, some of my students is no deposit, no return. <laughs> keep up, keep them. <laughs> Yes? The what? Which sword? That sword was uh, donated to a temple and was in the possession of a temple in Japan. And about 10 or 12 years ago it was stolen. And we don't know where it is now. We, it may be in this country. Many, many, many swords came came to this country. No, I, I forgot his name. I'm sorry. I forgot his name. A uh, very famous, famous story. What's the second example you I'm a Soto Shu Zen priest. And uh, uh, my temple is at the Zen Shuji in uh, little Tokyo. And uh, I'm in the Zen Shuji photo mission and in the I'm also working in the North American headquarters for Soto Shoes and Buddhism in this country. Yes? Yes, I have lots of female students. Uh, we have uh, um, we have uh, young children, and we have senior citizens, and we have uh, men and women. Everyone uh, can practice Aikido, and everyone can go at their own level and at their own pace. And everyone has their own, um, uh, how should I say, direction. Some people just come for exercise. Some people just come for relaxation and diversion. Some people come to really understand there's a martial art, um, uh, many things. We had uh, one person join at the age of 69 with acute bursitis. So he couldn't comb his hair because he couldn't move his hand higher than this. And he had to keep his wallet in the front pocket because he couldn't reach behind and keep it in his back pocket. 
And uh, after about two years of training, he just stayed on the corner and just practiced at his own pace. And after about two or three years, uh, his uh, acute prosciutto was completely gone. So the doctor was amazed. So um, there are some kind of health benefits as well. Because in Aikido, the idea is not to force anything and not to struggle against anything. Because we struggle so much in our lives. Any other questions? Yes? I started when I was 10 years old. <laughs> and I'm 42 now, so about 32 years. And um, for me, I um, I practice Aikido for so long, and uh, oddly enough, the martial art of Aikido is what drew me into religion to finally become a priest. So I think martial arts has a very, very positive, very um, constructive goal in our society today. Yes? Yes. Yes? What? In uh, downtown little Tokyo, far, far away from here. <laughs> yes? Well, in uh, four months it took to make uh, the movie, he made millions of dollars, and if I can pay my rent each month, I'm happy, so I can't say anything about his IQ. <laughs> if I could make that much money, I would say something, but I can't. <laughs> Every time he makes a movie, we get hundreds of students coming into the dojo. And they all say they want to be like uh, Steven Seagal. And uh, they're gone in about two months. But during those two months when they do come, you know, I go to nice restaurants. <laughs> buy myself some new clothes. <laughs> so I uh, get my car fixed. So I appreciate Steven Seagal's efforts quite a bit. Yeah, he has another movie. I can't wait for it to come out. <laughs> because I, I have to get a tuna and I want to get my car painted. So if you know him, please tell him to hurry up. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes? Yes? The, the top part of the uniform is uh, uh, originally called sashinashi, and it's uh, double stitched. This used to be hand stitched with a thick thread, and it used to take hours and days to stitch it. And it was made to reinforce the top against the hard training. The bottom pants and the top part is uh, the design is actually based on the samue which is the uniform worn by Zen monks when they work. And uh, it's been adopted to the training. This uh, black thing or blue thing is called a hakama. And this was the use, this was worn by the samurai class. And uh, the reason why we wear it today is to remind us of that tradition of the samurai warrior long ago. Is there any significance between the black and the blue? Hmm? Is there any significance between black and blue? Mm, mine is more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, black or blue is fine. This one is, uh, these are hand dyed indigo, so they, uh, actually it's a lot of trouble because they bleed a lot. But this is the style that O Sensei wore during his practice days, so we continue. Yes? Uh -huh. Yeah, I teach, but I, 
I, I don't have any students who are interested in, in that uh, aspect because I, I studied Japanese healing arts and also Tibetan healing arts and also Chinese healing arts including acupuncture and moxibustion and uh, medicine is uh, one of my great loves but uh, no, I don't have any students who are interested in that aspect but personally myself um, the Tibetan, Chinese, and Japanese uh, healing is very, very interesting. Because um, martial arts means how to preserve life, not how to take life. So I believe that uh, medicine, healing, and martial arts are extremely compatible. That's, that's my own thought. Any other questions? Yes? What do I charge? Um, it's uh, $75 a month, and um, they, they can, you can come seven days a week. We have classes every day of the week, including holidays. And um, we have very uh, beautiful dojo downtown. It's uh, completely handcrafted in a traditional Japanese style. So uh, it is the dojo itself is almost like a work of art. So it's a nice environment for training. Oh. Please ask your questions now because in about two minutes I'm going to charge a quarter. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Oh, one more question. Yes. Hmm? Visitors? Oh yeah, sure. Come in down. I don't serve tea and croissants or anything. You're welcome to come and watch anytime. Thank you very much. <laughs>